In this presentation, we're going to have a quick look at how to test some assumptions for ANOVA procedures. Okay, so what we have here is our code and graphical procedures, and other, here on the next page um, of the document I'm working on. And what I want to do is actually just check if uh, some of the underlying assumptions are valid. What I've done in the previous question is run this ANOVA procedure. Okay, and in the question you sort of um, try it out. So in this question, we just want to check, is it a valid assumption? So uh, what are the assumptions underlying ANOVA? Well, actually, there's quite a few. But so let's actually just sort of rephrase this as more so testable assumptions, OK? So what are these testable assumptions underlying ANOVA? Well, the first one is uh, related to this one here. Uh, Shapiro worked normality tests and we're carrying it out on the residuals. That is to say, the residuals are normally distributed. Okay. Okay. So in this case, what we're doing is test, uh, carrying out a Shapiro world test on the residuals. Here, the null hypothesis is that residuals are normally distributed. Okay say are normal okay and because of that p-value we fail to reject null okay so straightforward enough like that uh, we get a very high p-value okay the second one is that related testable assumption is that we all can also can test the mean of the residuals is zero but by definition will almost automatically be by due to the algorithm. The the other one the other testable assumptions is for the Bartlett test for homogeneity of variances, okay? And this idea of homogeneity of variances is that for each of the subgroups of the population, each subgroup would have a population variance, okay? Not a sample variance. So the uh the population of each member or uh, or each item in A, B, C, D, E, F, or each of the possible subgroups would be equal, okay? So what I'm going to do first off is to sort of first off look at a box plot uh, of a, a, a series of box plots. Here we have uh, six subgroups starting from the bottom A, B, C, D, E, F, okay? And quickly what I want to do is make a visual determination to sort of see is the scale uh, as I said, so is the like, like the variance is the scale is the dispersion uh, more or less the same for each? Now, the key thing, my key tell is that I'll I'll use the whole thing here. Look at the length of that one from top to bottom there. Uh, compare that to this one down here. This one here. Sorry, a little bit skew there and this one down here. Essentially they're not all the same size. There's a, quite a bit of variety in amongst the sizes. So with the red one, this is, it's significantly larger than all of those, the, 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 ones, the one up at the top there, my red one, this one here. Uh, it's significantly larger than all of my blue ones, so to speak. That's a blue one as well. Okay, we might sort of say that the blue ones are not significantly different from each other. They might be the sample sizes might be a bit different, but not significantly different. Like the differences in variances might be just due to error. But all of those blue ones are conspicuously less. They they conspicuously narrower than the red one up at the top. As that is to say, that leads us to the conclusion that homogeneity of variances might be an issue with lack of it. So essentially what is required in the ANOVA procedures is that the subgroups have equal variance and we want to test that. So homogeneity of variance is that subgroups of the like so here we all the subsamples have equal variance. Okay, uh, what we'll do here, that, that sigma squared is variance. So what we'll do is look at this p-value here. It is highly significant. So in this case, what we'll do is fail to reject. Okay, or sorry, reject. So reject null that the assumptions in this case for this data set, with, the, with the, this data set with the six subgroupings, 
is essentially the, the assumption of homogeneity of variances is not well met. Okay, so uh, something we can also do is test the. Uh, this is to, for to do with the normality of residuals. This one again. So this is a, a QQ plot for normality of residuals. Okay, so that one looks okay. You're allowed a little bit of. It's not perfect. Essentially, what, the do, what should happen here is the dots should follow the red line there, that, or that the, the the red dots should follow that line. Now you might notice they go off, uh, off, uh, go off that uh, trend line a bit up here. There's also this one down here. Essentially, it's not a perfect. The normality assumption is not perfect, but uh, uh, just basing it off the p-value and the QQ plot would we'll sort of say, yeah, it's not perfect, but it's. It's reasonable enough to sort of assume that normality is not um, uh, not the assumption of normality is not like not massively violated. Uh, one more uh, is this one here, and what we're looking here at here is the heteroskedasticity. Okay, or actually, there's the the counter example is homoskedasticity. Okay, and homoskedasticity is that uh, constant variance. Okay, this is the last testable assumption. Constant variance of residuals. Okay, this is the residuals again. Okay, so essentially what we're not seeing is any discernible trend here. Okay. There's no no discernible trend here, but if I'll just give you a sort of counterexample, so essentially what was uh, constant variance that there's no sort of trend evident there, that the dots are more or less scattered uh, uniformly uh, around the plot. What we would look out for is this thing called heteroskedasticity. Okay, that's the sort of what we're looking for. So this is non-constant variance. If you were more uh, if you sort of feel just saying constant variance and non-constant variance is probably if you and if you feel that's just make your point a bit better and you understand it better that's fine as well uh, this is just from an old presentation so what we're looking at for here on this plot is just to get my pen working here there we go so something like this uh, this is what would be an example of heteroskedasticity so this is our plot here this is our line Okay, so something like this, if we had our points, let's make that a little bit bigger. So if we had our points scattered around, but let's say there was a funnel effect, that is to sort of say they get narrower going towards the left and more spread out toward, if you're heading towards the right, that is what we would call heteroskedasticity. Okay, and what we might look out for is what this thing called a funnel effect. That you might sort of see that they are have this sort of overall trend. This is what they call a funnel effect. Okay, so this is heteroskedasticity, and this is one possible example. You might have the funnel going in the opposite direction as well. Okay, so uh, broader at the left hand side, narrower at the right hand side. Something you might also look out for is this thing called uh, autocorrelation. Here it's just bad bad fitting of the residuals. But uh, autocorrelation is, I just mentioned it here, heteroskedasticity will probably be enough to answer this, but like we might have our points sort of scattered in a very systematic pattern like this. Okay. So this is what they call autocorrelation, where the, uh, well, this is what you might, that. Essentially, this is this is sort of plot would indicate autocorrelation, where there seems to be some sort of systematic pattern throughout the data, okay, or throughout the scatter plot. So this would indicate autocorrelation, where the residuals are not independent. This is sorry, go back there. This is the funnel effect. This would indicate heteroskedasticity. Okay, that's also bad. So that's the last of the three testable assumptions. 
There's a formal test you can do here. So actually, when you do these plots, it's not actually properly a test, but there is properly tests you can do. But still, it's you could you sort of have a good diagnostic. Uh, you have a decent diagnostic procedure for testing the last of those assumptions. So anyway, that's a lot of work done. Let's just go back to our question. Uh, what are the testable assumptions? Okay, so let's just sort of review them here now. One, uh, residuals are normal. Uh, two constant variance of residuals. That's our plots. With when we're looking for heteroskedasticity and autocorrelation, and the last one was homogeneity of variances amongst the subgroups. Okay. So that's question. That question done. Testing these ANOVA assumptions.